G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now I promised you all cushion covers and we're gonna start, I thought we'd start off really simple. So I'm trying to offer a wide variety of skill uh, techniques. So we're going to go for something really simple and this little cushion is a beautiful little country cow and she's very glamorous and she has, she's so simple. So she's great for beginner sewers. So a great one to get started with. Of course, you'll need a great pattern and I have one of those in the description below. All you need to do is click on that link, download those pattern templates, make sure you set your printer to print at actual size and those pattern pieces will be absolutely right as rain. Now remember, moving forward, listen, there's a couple of movie quotes in there. Let's see who catches them. So let's get sewing. So let's have a look at what we need to make up a little cushion. So it's a very simple design and I'm going to be putting a very uh, simple envelope back on it so it, it's not difficult at all. So we'll be starting with a centre panel. Now your centre panel I'm doing in a cream that's a self print so it's got a little bit of interest to it. We need the base to be cream or an off-white because our little design is actually it's, it's like a little stencil cut out. So we're using some of the color from the backing fabric to create our little face. Um, so, and then we're going to need our little cow, our first piece, so our main face piece. And that is cut from, a, I've got a black print, so I've got a little bit of print on there, but it's predominantly black. You can remember with this one that you can make it up in the lovely Highland colors. So you could do a lovely rich rust sort of brown color for these parts. But uh, for this one today, we're going for the classic uh, black and white, very recognizable. So I've got that one cut in fabric. And of course these pieces have heat and bond, fusible webbing applied to the back. And, and I cut my little muzzle piece out of felt. I just find that works a little better. Now remember that if you're going to be washing this little cushion cover, good idea to wash your fabrics first and use a washable acrylic felt. Um, okay, so I've got the little black section, the little muzzle section done in black. And you can see that they are just positioned in a way that creates that little face. The same thing with the little lower lip. That one will just sit underneath there and that one is also in felt and I have added some little ear insides just for a bit more interest there. I've cut mine in felt but you can cut those in any fabric that you like. We're going to need a little bandana. So I've actually got some little red bandana fabric um, and I thought I would go with that, keep it all very classic. And that one will just sit on the top of the head there. And we also need a little bandana tie up. Now those are just two pieces cut from fabric. There's no treatment on them at all. Just two little pieces cut together the same. And that one will sit at the top there. Um, I have also got a little daisy cut from double felt. Double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. And I've actually got a video that shows you how to do that. I'll put that link up there for you. Um, just cut one of those out and then we will need our little eye pieces. Now, little eye pieces, again, I've cut them from felt because we get a more precise little look. Our little eye pieces are just going to be fused into place on either side with her lovely luscious lashes there. And you can see once we've got it all pressed down, it will all sit very nicely. And then we have a little, the whites of our eyes will be going in there too. Whoops. Whoops, the daisies. So that will go in there. And we need our little nostrils, which will be going here. Again, I've used felt, but you can use fabric. And that will just complete our little picture. We need a button to be adding the little daisy to the little bandana ties and to the top of the head. And we also need two little, I'm using brown buttons and they will just be going in on top there, stitching those in. I guess you could use any color, but I just find the brown breaks up the black just a little bit. So it's a very simple design 
but it's very very striking and it's so easy to do so then you'll need center panels sorry side panels so your side panels the measurement for those is 28 centimeters by 11 and a half centimeters and we'll be adding those on the side and then we have our top and bottom panels which are 50 centimeters by 11.5 centimeters again and they will be going across the top there and our little bandana tie up will be nicely 3d over the top of that one now this outside fabric um, I have interfaced it with my fusible woven interfacing as I have this center panel I like a nice firm crisp pillow so that's what I like to do I definitely recommend interfacing at least the center panel um, it just means that you get just a much um, a cleaner finish now as far as your fabric that goes around the outside of your little cow I was going to go for a lovely floral because it is spring here so I thought I might go for floral um, but I ended up just going for um, just a very country look with the gingham because I thought you know floral for spring groundbreaking but uh, never mind I've gone with the check but it would look fabulous with the denim surround too so keeping it all very country we also need our back flaps which make up our envelope back and they have no treatment on them at all they are just cut uh, from the fabric as it is and those back flaps measure 50 by 30 centimeters now I have put the inch imperial measurements in there for you this time and they are there in your on your pattern templates you'll find those measurements all of these measurements are written there so let's go ahead with our first step and move everything else out the way and our first step is to press on our little first cow head piece which is this one and that one sits just four and a half centimeters from the very center to the top so you just really do have to measure that so that the balance is all right once we put it all together and so the little seams around the outside you want to also make sure that you've got it sitting absolutely central here uh, so measure each side as well and then it's a matter of pressing that one into place and then you can add your little muzzle piece now you just need to situate that just below and just leave a little space of about it's around about four millimeters just to break that up and then the same with the little mouthpiece just to leave a little space of about four to five centimeters below it make sure it's all very straight we can press all those on with a hot iron and a protective cloth now from there how you actually treat the edges of these is entirely up to you I'm going to go ahead and do most of it today on the machine particularly because it uh, mine is predominantly black so uh, I prefer to sew black on the machine I'll be going right close to the edge all the way around those pattern pieces both of them but you could alternatively so with a blanket applique stitch right around all of those pieces um, which I will be doing with a couple of the pieces and you'll see that you can do a bit of both if you like so that's our first step to go ahead and press those on and then stitch around the full outside edges of all of those little pieces my next step now that my black pieces are sewn on is to add my little bandana my little headscarf and that will just line up with the top of the head there you'll see make sure those little curves are all matched up and we press that one on I will do the same thing I'm going to stitch that one on the machine um, just as I did those pieces and while I'm doing that I'm going to take my two little tie bandana pieces and I'm going to put them right sides together as I have there and I've just pinned them and I'm going to be stitching right around the outside here but I'm going to leave a little opening at the bottom here probably around about just four or five centimeters just so that we can turn that one through 
so stitch right around and little seam allowance is only about four millimeters on that one and there you can see I've got my little bandana piece stitched on and have sewn up my little ties my little opening there so I'm just going to turn this one through and push it out with my knitting needle I've taken the little just snipped the little ends off here and just, just snipped just into that little V there and I will push out that one with my little knitting needle and I will give that one a press so there you can see my little bandana tie and I've just given that a press and press those that little opening edge under and you can see I've gone ahead and sewn a little top stitch right around the outside just gives it a lovely finish and we will add that one a little later with our with our flower and our button so we can pop that one aside so our next step is to press on our ear inserts and our little nostrils and I'll press those on and then I will go ahead and I will probably sew a blanket applique stitch around those so I'm just going to get them pressed on and once I have my little pink pieces on I've got my uh, I'm using an extra strong Gudeman thread my top stitching thread to embroider and I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch right around each of those ear pieces and each of those little nostril pieces because those are the areas I really want to pay a bit more attention to and really finish those off and I'm able to use just a darker pink just to really outline those little shapes so a blanket applique stitch is very straightforward if you haven't sewn one before I'm going to put a link up there to my video that shows you how to sew one but I've just got a single thread and I'm coming from behind right on the edge there of my little shape and I'm just going to be making they're just about three millimeters apart I'm going through both layers and coming up through that loop each time and you can see that's going to create that lovely little line along the edge which marks out our little shapes and it's one of my favorite stitches to do and you can see the result is really quite lovely and it will bind that little edge and um, and just give it a lovely finish so I'm going to go around both of those ears and around those little nostrils and there I have my stitching done and you can see how that really lines out those little shapes beautifully our next step is to add uh, the start of our little eyes now those just sit exactly in that little eye socket there and you have to make sure that there's some white space around the whole edge We've got our little lashes there poking up and my advice is to press them on one at a time and even heat up the area first before you you make your little placement so that they don't move at all because we really need we'll lose a whole effect if we don't have a nice little white space line around each of them so press each of those into place and then you can go ahead and stitch in your preferred way I'm going to go back to my machine again and sew very closely around the outside edge of each of those little pieces right so there you can see that my little backing eye pieces have been pressed on and stitched around and now I've been able to go ahead and do exactly the same thing with the little white pieces of the eye and making sure that there is black showing around that entire outer edge in the same way and then I've gone and just stitched those on in white so now that everything's on we will be adding our little buttons um, we're going to do that in a minute when we add our little final little top bandana um, those little buttons for the eyes they actually measure 1.5 centimeters if you're after a size and that seems to work just perfectly there so we will sew those on in a minute but first we're going to just treat our little flower that we have ready made up what I've done is I've gone ahead and marked the center of that little flower and I have ruled in the little segments of the flower from between each petals I hope you can see that there on those lines very very lightly and now I'm going to take this one to the machine and I'm going to stitch those lines in 
it's just a little bit more detail that really makes that little flower stand out my little flower is a white daisy so I'm just going to be going with just a deeper cream beige color um, and of course your flower could be any color at all so just usually just a slightly darker thread than your fabric color works best to mark that out so I'm going to go ahead and stitch those lines in so there you can see my little flowers nicely segmented there just adds that little bit of detail so I'll be able to stitch that one on and now for the placement of your your little uh, ties on your headscarf you could center it which is it's fine you could put your little flower right in the center but I like to offset mine otherwise I think it's a little bit too everything mirrored so if I just offset that a little it means that that little loop is going to come up over our little border fabric there which will be quite cute and we can pop that little flower right in the middle and stitch through all of those layers which will hold that one in place as well as the flower and you can see that I've added one of my buttons and if you sew if you've got a very dark button like I have here if you sew it on with a white thread we get the effect of a little highlight in the eye so you can do that you don't have to do that you can just sew it on in, in your black thread if you'd rather it was just look like a solid black color but just that little bit of white can really highlight what is otherwise predominantly quite a dark area so I'm going to go ahead and sew my little buttons into place and now I have all of my little details all uh, stitched on so and you can also see those little eye buttons they're actually positioned so that we cover the top of that eye so that there's no white showing above the eye that way we get more of that little dreamy cow look so our next step is to add our side and top and bottom panels and we have those ready so it's just a matter of lining up your right sides together on each of those and we're just going to stitch those on using a half a centimetre seam allowance so a five millimetre seam allowance we're going to stitch those two in place then we're going to open them out and press those seams out nice and flat and then we're going to add in the same way with right sides together we're going to add our top pieces and so there we have our side panels and our top and bottom panels stitched into place and nicely pressed out open and flat don't worry if your top pieces top and bottom pieces have a little extra better to have a little extra than not enough we can just trim those off and so now we're going to prepare our back pieces our back flaps so what we're going to do on each of the long sides on each of one of the long sides of our back flap pieces we're going to press under as I have here along that that whole edge one centimeter we're going to press under and then another centimeter so that we've got no raw edges and then we're just going to sew a little top stitch to hold that in place as you can see that I've done there so I'm going to go ahead I've done this one I'm going to go ahead and stitch this little one too and so now our next step is to add our back panel pieces to our front and so that we've got them nicely stitched now so we're putting right sides together and we're going to match up that top line now that we've trimmed off our top and bottom panels we're going to match up that top line and overlap those two edges which will give us our fold over our envelope back and we will just line that one up and it's just a matter of pinning or clipping those into place right the way around and then we're going to sew around the entire outside edge of our pillowcase and make sure that we back and forth on our where our little envelope starts and finishes and remember that we've got one uh, that is underneath here also so just make sure that back and forth on these sections and back and forth on the one that we know is underneath there so take some time to get it all lined up and I'm going to be stitching around that whole outside and then I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch 
just to finish off those seams to stop them fraying. If you have a serger or an overlocker, of course, you could go ahead and do that. And there we have my cushion cover all stitched up right around the edge and I've just done my little zigzag to keep those edges nice and neat and now I will simply just trim all my threads now when you're putting these back flaps onto your front don't be worried if you've got some some extra fabric it's just about lining it up and trimming it off it depends on the fabric that you're using this one this fabric's actually got a, quite a bit of movement in the weave which is which can be annoying so you can have a little bit of adjusting to do as you go just trim it off and so long as you end up with a nice neat effect at the end you'll be all right so we'll just pull this one through give it a press and pop our cushion insert in and there we have our finished a very glamorous lady cow pillow cushion cover so I hope you've enjoyed that one I've actually popped a 50 centimeter square cushion insert in that one and uh, that has fit that one nicely I'm sure it could take a 45 if you didn't want it quite so full um, but that has come along nicely so I hope you've enjoyed making that one with me and look forward to more cushions well thank you all for sewing with me today how did you like little miss glamour cow I thought she was lovely and a lovely simple project to do so moving forward make sure that you follow me on instagram i'm really loving all of the photos of your your beautiful creations you're making with my patterns you're all inspiring me now that's really exciting for me and i'm gonna i'm gonna pin those beautiful photos on a board i've made on pinterest just for you and it is called called you made it and uh, it's a great place to come and see what everybody else is doing with my patterns and it's a really positive little community we've got going there so make sure you join it so make sure that you subscribe come and join our sewing journey um, it's all very exciting moving forward there's going to be of course more cushion covers coming up next I've got a beautiful little mini quilt that you don't want to miss and uh, who caught my movie quotes today there were two let's see you'll have to tell me in the comments look most of all remember always when those good things come to you in your day just make sure that you share them that you pay them forward and until next time it's Huru from me